So the USC Trojans enter this week flying high and deservedly so, coming off of a massive win against ranked UCLA in a game that was an absolute thriller. We talked about during the week that was a game that was going to provide fireworks, and that's exactly what we got. But if you're USC, even though you're feeling good, that does not mean the job is done. Notre Dame is a team that's going to present some interesting challenges, and this is a game I'm really excited to see. We talked about this before the season started, that this was a game to circle. Today, we need to break down this game, but we also need to talk about the possibilities USC has at making a college football playoff appearance. Before we jump into all of this, y'all know the drill. I need to hear from you. Hop down to the comments. Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. Do you believe that USC could win the Pac-12 this year? And let me know what you're thinking. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification as I do constant college football content. You don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoyed that content, be sure to like and comment down below as those interactions are massive. But having said all that, let's jump right into this. And what a performance by the Trojans against UCLA. I mean, Caleb Williams had a career day. And we are absolutely going to have to have a conversation about him and the Heisman Trophy at some point in the very near future. I've said consistently, Caleb Williams has one of the highest ceilings in college football for any position, for any player. He is that gifted. I thought that he was just a young player and needed to continue in his development, but Saturday showed you when everything's clicking for Caleb, goodness gracious, he is a problem and he is a really tough player to stop. What he did that game was awesome, throwing for almost 500 yards at a 74% completion percentage and going over 10 yards per attempt is just nutty. And we can talk about the quality of UCLA's defense. I know they let Bo Nix have a big day. Of course, Bo Nix is having a big year. That's neither here nor there. Even if UCLA isn't a top-tier pass defense, to go for almost 500 yards at a 74.4% completion percentage and to average over 10.4 yards per attempt that's impressive no matter who you're playing, and we need to give credit where credit is due. Caleb absolutely has a conversation in the Heisman Trophy race, and I can't wait to talk about that in a separate video. But now, let's refocus, because as much as we could talk about how great that USC-UCLA game is, we need to turn our attention to the future. Because Notre Dame is a team that has really been trending in a positive direction. They were kind of rode off by a lot of people in college football when they took the early loss, but ever since then, they have been building and getting some serious wins. Why I'm so excited about this game is quite simple. Whenever we look at this game, it's giving us a matchup of best against best. USC comes in with the number two total offense in the nation, and Notre Dame comes in with the number 17 total defense in the nation. Furthermore, when we really look at what makes USC such a prolific offense, it's their passing attack. Their passing attack comes in as the number four passing attack in the nation. When we look at what makes Notre Dame such a good defense, it's their ability to stop the pass. They come in as the number 16 passing defense in the nation. This is what I mean. That matchup in and of itself is going to give us fireworks. How is Notre Dame and Marcus Freeman going to scheme to slow down Caleb Williams? How are they going to successfully keep him in the pocket so that he doesn't escape and use his legs as a mechanism to just tear apart that Notre Dame defense like he's done so many times in the past? Remember, I said this. Caleb Williams is an interesting quarterback because when he escapes the pocket and is on the run— that might be when he's the deadliest, and that's a scary thing to think, because so many times before, if a defense was to get a quarterback off of their spot and make them uncomfortable, now they're escaping the pocket, if you're a defense, you feel like at some level you did your job so long as you don't let him run rampant on you. But for Caleb Williams, any mistake in discipline when he's on the run, he's going to be able to take advantage of it, and he can still make every throw on the run that he can make in a clean pocket. That's what makes him such a dangerous passer on the run is that there's not a drop-off in his passing ability while he's being mobile. So for Notre Dame, how are you going to successfully keep him in the pocket, nullify that threat of his legs, and make him uncomfortable while keeping him in the pocket? That is something I cannot wait to watch. Now, this is something we talked about before the UCLA game, and I said even though it's unfortunate that Travis Dye went down with injury, we still have to look at this honestly. Austin Jones is a very capable running back, and he showed that against UCLA. Relik Brown is electricity in a bottle, and Caleb Williams is a mobile quarterback. So the threat of the rush is still present, and you still must respect it. So that's going to be another avenue that I'm super interested in. The one concern I have for Notre Dame, if USC gets a lead, how are you going to be able to match them? I know USC doesn't have a vaunted defense that's known for going out there and shutting teams down. I'm just interested to see how this offense for Notre Dame is going to be able to progress if they get behind. 
Because whenever we look at the offensive stats for Notre Dame, it gets super interesting. They come in as the number 113 passing offense in the nation and the number 36 rushing attack in the nation to go along with being the number 75 total offense in college football. So it's certainly not an offense that you look at and are scared of facing. However, on the flip side of that equation, we have to talk about USC's defense. USC's defense leaves a lot to be desired. They come in as the number 96 total defense in the nation, number 105 against the pass, and number 68 against the rush. That's why I led this video talking about we're getting a matchup that's best against best. What does USC do best? Their passing attack. And when we look at it, it makes complete sense. Caleb Williams at quarterback. You have the former Blitnikoff winner, Jordan Addison, out there. You have Mario. You have so much in terms of receiver ability. And Caleb is spreading the ball around. You look at it. He's throwing for a lot of yards. Go look at the wide receiver stats for USC. He's getting a lot of those guys involved, which makes it so much more difficult to key in on any one individual and try and successfully take them away from the offense. However, when we look at the other side, that's exactly what Notre Dame does. They're great at stopping the pass. Guys, this is a game I can't wait to watch. It's going to have major implications because if USC is able to take down Notre Dame, we all of a sudden have a completely different conversation we have to have about the Trojans. Because if they take down Notre Dame and they win the Pac-12 championship, this is a USC team that could make a playoff berth. And in fact, if they go undefeated, I don't know how you're going to keep them out. Because when you look at this, Georgia will probably be in, barring a loss in the SEC championship game. And even then, it's going to be an incredible conversation. But let's be honest, I don't think people have LSU beating Georgia as impressive as LSU has been this year. So let's operate under the assumption that Georgia's into the college football playoffs. Personally, I think Ohio State is going to beat Michigan. I think it's going to be a great game. But I think Ryan Day gets revenge for the loss last year. So we know Ohio State will be in because I don't think anybody on the other side of the Big Ten is going to be able to down the Buckeyes. So you have two teams right there. Michigan will have taken a loss, and now they're not going to be playing for the Big Ten Championship, so now they're a one-loss Wolverine team without a conference championship. That's going to be tough for them to get into the playoffs against a one-loss Trojan team with a conference championship. At that point, USC has a clear path to the playoffs, and that would be a massive win for the Trojans. Look, even if you were to make the playoffs, because at the beginning of the year, guys, I'm going to be forthright. The video is still up, and I said it. I did not have y'all as a playoff team. I thought USC would be a much improved team. I thought we'd watch the Trojans and say, man, they're trending in the right direction. They're a fun team. You give it time, they're going to be really good. But here they are. There's a legitimate conversation we need to have about whether USC could go to the college football playoffs, and this game is going to be the catalyst to spur that conversation. Because if USC can down Notre Dame, oh boy, that conversation is going to be one that will be had next week. This is a game we have got to watch. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm really looking forward to hearing from all of you. Drop me your score predictions down below, and that's it. See ya.